Test, test. Hey guys, welcome back, Orbom here, bringing you another one of our Digimon live deck profiles. Today, people, today we're going to be talking about my green deck, and I'm going to be talking a lot about this deck today, because I have a lot to say. Uh, and the first thing I want to say is this is probably the strongest deck I've ever played, hands down, no contest. Now, I do want to say before we get into it, this is going to be a set three meta deck list. No starter deck cards but I will be talking about what starter deck cards I would put in here and how I would change the deck if I did have starter deck meta based on the few cards we've seen so far. But you guys know the drill. If you guys like the Digimon content, if you guys want to see more of the Digimon content, be sure to like the video. Uh, <laughs> leave a comment down below. Today's question is going to be, what's your favorite level 6 green mega? So what's your favorite green mega in this game right now? There's a lot of green megas actually. Green has Green has a really interesting style where there's just a lot of options in green and so it's it makes green both the most fun deck to play and the most difficult deck to play and the most fun deck to build and the most difficult deck to build actually it's not that hard to build but it's definitely like you have to figure out what is good it's very moldable too based on the meta which is really nice and i mold this i made this deck able to beat red fairly consistently and able to control pretty much every deck in the format right now. And my audio is not working because for whatever reason, the music stopped playing. So we'll turn that back on right now. It was very odd. I don't know why the music stopped playing. All right, cool. So you guys know the drill, like the video. If you don't like the video, dislike the video. Uh, share the content so we can continue growing the Digimon greatness. We're gonna be spreading the gospel that is the Digimon TCG. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get on right into it. So the, the focus of this deck is going to be, of course, Sarismon, ridiculous Digimon. Uh, it's got download itself, but more importantly, if you use download, you rest one of your opponent's Digimon instead of your own, which is the purpose of this deck. This deck is very much like the long game kind of deck. All you're doing the entire time you're playing this deck is making sure your opponent never has Digimon. You rest them, you destroy them, and you slowly take security, if you even want to take security at all. Sometimes you just kind of play the game until your board is so big that you just can take security all in one shot. Unless you're playing things against things like Omnimon that can de-digivolve your stuff or like can destroy a bunch of your Digimon. But usually your Digimon are way stronger than one Omnimon can destroy, which is really handy as well. So that's gonna be the focus of this deck. Uh, other options we have in this deck, we're gonna be playing Bancho Stingmon for that piercing. Essentially, if you're playing against Omnimon, you have that security attack plus two. Uh, if you can rest your opponent's Digimon, use piercing on their Omnimon, take three security uh, while doing that because you have piercing as well, and you're going to be definitely strong enough, because you're at least 1,600, I believe. Yeah, because you get 17, you get 700 more DP when you attack a dude that has more than 12,000 DP, which is kind of relevant, because uh, there's 12,000 DP or more, right? So this works on things like most Megas uh, that have 12,000 DP, so like Blitz, Greymon, and whatnot. So it works on them, which is really, really nice. And it works on all Omnimons and stuff like that. And it also works really well in the Mirror Match as well. So it's a really good card. Uh, <clears throat> it's just a matter of can you get rid of all their blockers sometimes you have to bait them by destroying their blockers first or making sure all their blockers are rested and then go into this destroy their omnimon and have a good time <laughs> we're also playing a mega gargamon at first i really slept on this card i thought this card was terrible but one thing that i've really realized in this in this meta and this is like this is true just in digimon in, uh, in general but especially in this current meta where most decks have so much they can do now with very little memory is that you don't want to give your opponent a bunch of memory in this deck in particular, I'm not playing Puppetmon because Puppetmon, sure, you can stop all your opponent from resting, and Puppetmon's good in case your opponent has like a really like huge board and all of them are rested and you can just stop them from becoming active. But in most cases, when you're playing this deck, you're going to be resting your opponent's Digimon and destroying your opponent's Digimon. So Mega Gargomon's ability to just rest one and stop it from becoming active is just good enough to survive a few turns. And also it does have security attack plus one which is nice as well because that can actually help you ramp into ending the game. So we're playing two of these. Once again, this is our mega of choice. Uh, we're playing eight megas in this list, which is quite a lot, honestly. But because of like we compensate that with having, I believe, 16 um, or 17, actually, even more than I thought, 17 level threes, we can easily compensate for that uh, high amount of megas that we're playing currently. We're also playing some option cards. No tamers, though, because this deck is the king of using no memory. <laughs> like most of the time you're using one memory a turn. That's all you need, and then you can just pop off because this deck is absolutely absurd. This is I took out the I took out the Mimi for this exact reason. You choke your opponent, your opponent cannot choke you. Even if they do choke you by giving you a one memory, you can still do a bunch of stuff most of the time. So 
let's go ahead and get into everything else. As far as my options here, I'm actually playing two Minomon, and honestly, this might go up to three or even four, because Minomon's ability, uh, if you attack a Digimon, you get a thousand more power, is really nice for that whole control the aspect. If, if Digimon, your opponent have, end up getting too strong, uh, it's nice to have access to Minomon to be able to destroy them. I really think I might bump this up to three, but Argomon, of course, is really good because of that puzzle memory. But like I said in this deck, the reason why uh, I'm thinking about cutting this down to one and making this four is because, like I said, you don't really don't need that much memory to play the game <laughs> at all when, you, when, you, when you're playing green, which is a big boon as to why green is good because you can use all your all your level fours, or almost all of them. Whenever the starter deck comes out, all of your level threes or fours will have one evolution cost that matter. Everything else has a zero to two evolution cost in the level fives and everything else here, which can all be free thanks to hidden potential, by the way, uh, <laughs> which I guess we'll probably talk about that now. Hidden potential means if you rest one of your Digimon, you can reduce the evolution cost by five. So all of your evolutions has the capability of being free. So it's just it's, it's just absurd. Um, so, yeah, as far as what I'm playing, I am playing a bunch of the level two plays. Because once again, we are trying our best to make sure that our opponent has no memory during their turn as well so we want to make sure we have these cards that cost very little memory to use uh, so we are playing a bunch of these if you have to cut any you would cut the argomon right because you are playing other argomons and you don't want to do that omnimon shenanigans where your where omnimon destroys all of your argomons if they ever get more to play green digimon in the future which i should probably just like have this open so we can discuss all of the other options here uh which we're gonna do this video might be a little bit longer because like uh, the reason why I'm so like invested in this deck, right, is actually for not the reasons you would think. I actually did not like this deck, not because it wasn't good. Honestly, it was because it was too good and people are playing it all the time. <laughs> so I was building and building because I was going to be part of the Digibyte. I didn't I didn't end up joining that tournament because uh, the Players Cup for Pokemon was the same day. And that's like a Pokemon sanctioned tournament. And I wanted to make sure I actually played in that. Um, so unfortunately, I ended up not being able to play that tournament. But this is the deck I was going to play because <laughs> all the decks I played against it would lose most of the time. Like this is probably the most consistent deck and the strongest deck I've ever played against anything ever. So unless the decks are like specifically tech to beat this or have like crazy security rush, you usually cannot, you usually cannot beat this deck. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. But yeah, we are playing a bunch of the two plays. It's cheap, it's efficient, that's what you care about. We're playing this because it has a 1000 power a boost and we're playing this because it's strong 5000 power is kind of ridiculous you can actually crash with a bunch of blockers which is really handy crashing is just sometimes good when you play these cards also 5000 power uh means that things like mm, volcanic dramon can't destroy you and 5000 power is just ridiculously strong combined with things like minamon but usually it is a two evolution cost so you're probably just going to hard play this most of the time so it's a, it's a really good card. It's it's probably one of, been one of my favorite cards to play because that power is ridiculous for that cost. And we're playing Terrier Mon. This is for the Ragnar Lord Mon matchups, and I guess blue, but blue isn't as popular with with uh, the Hammer Spark anymore. But yeah, if you are running against Ragnar Lord Mon, finding this is gonna be pretty easy. And digging in this deck is really easy because you are evolving like crazy all the time. So you're drawing a bunch of cards. It's really easy to dig in this deck. So finding a Terrier Mon just to play down so your opponent can't evolve Ragnar Lord Mon without actually paying the memory. Or play Hammer Spark, and it's really good if you're going against Blue, because if, if you hit a Hammer Spark in the uh, security, it becomes kind of annoying, because usually your turn's going to end, because you usually have your turn, you usually only have like one or two memory during your turn, because your opponent will choke you. Unless your opponent gives you a bunch of memory, you don't really care, right? Um, so that's it for the level threes. As far as the other options go, things that are relevant. Palmon is good if you want to dig. Like I said, digging is not super necessary in this deck because you just you play 12 level fours which is a good amount in general and also this deck is so consistent because you're drawing all the time that you don't really care for dicking and everything else that matters doesn't really matter this is a pretty good it's got a little bit more power um 4, power for free evolution so if you're looking to play more level fours or level threes this is a pretty good option just because that power is really good uh Wormmon doesn't really come into play because we don't care about destroying ourselves but if you want to, you could, I guess. I don't know. I don't want to play three costs to put something down. I want to play two costs. Tentamon is decent um, because you can destroy things with 3,000 DP or less. This is probably the only other card I'd probably put in uh, if I wanted to put in more level threes, but it's, it's, it doesn't really come into play too much. There's a lot of decks out there that have pretty strong Digimon now, uh, especially since you see green everywhere and they have this dude. 
it doesn't come into play as much as you would like. And then this is going to be a card we talk about later because that's part of the starter deck cards. Uh, that's it for the level threes. As far as level fours go, I am playing the Vegemon. Actually, put in that that card, and it's going to bother the heck out of me if I don't remove it. There we go. <laughs> I am playing two Vegemon. The reason why I'm playing Vegemon is very simple. Omnimon exists. Omnimon Alter S. If you did evolve a level five into this Vegemon, it doesn't destroy it because you have six thousand power. That's coming to play quite a few times. Same with Woodmon. Now I am only playing three Woodmon. The reason why I'm only playing three is because it's two to evolve. It's a blocker, so if you need a blocker, it still exists. But because it's two to evolve, I don't really like it. Uh, there's so many one cost to evolve cards. There's Vegemon, Kabuterimon, Stingmon. The starter deck is giving us a one cost to play Kabuterimon blocker. The problem with it is that it is 5,000 power, so it does actually lose to Omnimon, but Omnimon doesn't get blocked anyways. So I don't know how relevant that's going to be. But I do think I replace the Woodmon altogether. And uh, I'm also playing a 1-up Togemon. This is just a consistency increaser more than anything. If you ever get clumped up hands, uh, it's nice to be able to play this to put a level 5 or higher Digimon into your hand. It's really nice for finding Sarasmon. Sometimes you just really want to find Sarasmon immediately. So it's there for that option. But you can easily remove it. I am playing 4 Kabuterimon and 1 Gargomon. Kabuterimon's better because it's a little bit stronger. And that strength actually matters in this deck when you're attacking Digimon. Uh... But I'm playing this as well. I'm playing them both because they have the ability of a thousand plus DP if you're rested, if your opponent has rested Digimon, for each of their rested Digimon. So that if your opponent has a bunch of rested Digimon on their board, you can get three, four, five thousand more power, which is nice if you're attacking security because then you don't have to worry about things like Omnimon and security. Uh, you can overpower it, which is nice. I'm playing one Stingmon. Stingmon is very eh. I'm very afraid of these uh, of these Digimon that don't let you gain memory. These Terrier Mons, but for all the colors, Chumon and Gazimon. Uh, for that reason, I'm only playing a one of Stingmon. Also, I had to make space for the other cards. You could easily put in more if you want to play more. Uh, but, I mean, it's nice being able to get that extra memory. But I'm really not sure. Like, the more I play this deck, the more I just don't think it's that necessary. Uh, so if you want, you could replace Stingmon with a Vegemon, maybe another Pokemon. I just like having as many one-cost evolutions as possible. So yeah, it's another option for you. As far as our level 5s go, this is going to be pretty interesting here. We are playing a 4 Argomon and 3 Blossomon. We're playing more Argomon because I like swarming the board with level 3s, so having access to Argomon. We play 17 level 3s, so we, sh we should be able to abuse this quite a few times. Uh, and once again, they all have download, which is the most important part, so we get free evolution very often. This is Blossomon. We're playing 3. I would like to play 4. I kind of like the Rapidmon a little bit more, which we'll talk about in a second, but it's 7,000 power. Once again, does come into play. Power is actually really important when it comes to this when it comes to this deck. You really want to make sure you're strong enough to destroy your opponent's Digimon uh, without having to crash. And then, of course, Rapidmon, just same ability as the Gargomon and the Kabuterimon. That power boost does matter. It does come into play. So we are playing two Rapidmon. It is a two-cost evolution, but we are playing... Um, we are still playing three of these hidden potential discovered, so it does come into play when it, when it comes to evolving these dudes that cost more than one. It actually comes into play very often. And we've already talked about the Megas, but Sarasmon here can rest your opponent's Digimon and has 12,000 power, so we can beat over a lot of Digimon with this card. Uh, this dude has security attack plus one and can rest one of your opponent's Digimon and make them not active during their active phase, which is good. And then you have Boncho Stingmon, which is good for Omnimon dealing. And I am still playing a one of Flower Cannon, you could easily cut this. I really, really like it. It's nice to be able to have that surprise, ha, resting your dude. It's only two memory. Uh, you can play it at any point, uh, that, and it could be a game-swinging card because sometimes your opponents don't expect you to play Flower Cannon. So they kind of put a bunch of dudes on the board. Maybe they give you a little bit extra memory that they shouldn't have, and you just kind of show them, hey, uh, I appreciate that you put in more Digimon on the board than I do, than I do have, or the ability to rest you with because of Sarasmon, but I still have Flower Cannon. And I'm still going to beat over your Digimon, and you're going to never attack my security, because that's what I do when I play green. Uh, I guess I can talk about some of the other option cards before we continue on this conversation. We can talk about some of the level 4s and the level 5s. We already mentioned most of the level 4s. I don't think there's anything else that's super relevant when it comes to level 4 Digimon. Uh, uh, there is one level 5 Digimon that's kind of relevant. Uh, I don't think this one matters. You can add a level 5 Digimon, one green tamer. We don't play any tamers, so this is just better. Here's more download options. I'd rather play the one cost evolutions. They have better effects. Uh, it's more, it's easier to uh, just spend one memory than it is to rest one of your own Digimon because uh, you don't want your opponent to start doing what you're doing and start attacking your Digimon all the time. So it's, it's easier for you to just, you know, uh, pay one memory to evolve than this to rest one of your Digimon just to get download. Sure, you have Sarasmon, but you have enough level five to where that's gonna, where that's going to matter. You have seven ways to rest. Uh, your own Digimon, and of course, um, 
that's pretty much all you need. If your opponent ever attacking ever attacks, you they get rested as well. So yeah, there's there's plenty that you don't have to worry about playing any more of these Argomons. Um, no security Digimon in this deck. We don't care. In fact, that's that's something I should probably mention. This deck is really strong, but its fatal flaw is that its security is boo boo. It's 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 boo boo. It's poop on the floor. It's terrible. Like you don't ever have to worry about security unless you get unlucky and hit into a Sarismon. If you have anything with twelve thousand power. You can just start taking your opponent's security and not have any risk. Uh, most risky thing is that they're going to get a hidden potential in their hand. Maybe you'll hit into a flower cannon if your opponent plays a bunch of flower cannons or something like that. But unless they're playing Omni Green, which I don't like at all, I think that deck's terrible. <laughs> unless they're playing Omni Green, uh, you should not have to worry about their security, which is really good for you uh, as a as a person playing against uh, Green. But it's really bad for you because every time you attack security, you're going to be rested and your opponent's going to be able to destroy you. And then you just have to deal with the fact that you probably have nothing to attack with the following turn. So it's going to be one of those, like, it's really hard. It's really, really hard. Like, the one, one deck that's good against these kind of decks are things that have security attack pluses. Because all they have to do is build up a red. They have to be really consistent, which is going to be kind of hard since you're not drawing as much if you keep something in, this, in the raising area. But all they have to do is build up a Digimon that has a bunch of security attack pluses. And then you just attack their security and hopefully you'll have enough to win the game that's like your best bet ragna does that pretty well but every other eh. like some red decks do it like omni red kind of has a weakness because it's you <laughs> most of the time you only have like security attack plus two unless you're playing a tamer a lot of decks don't play tamers i feel like tamers are gonna be if this deck becomes like super duper like over centralizing if it's super meta then you probably are forced to play tamers in your deck list because your opponent can choke you every single turn to only have one memory. So being able to start your turn with three memories is gonna be really big. So you can do multiple things in one turn. So tamers might become a necessity. So uh, tie, red tie, giving you that security attack increase is probably gonna be good. Um, like I said, red, in, especially in Japan, red is the best deck because it's getting the most results most consistently. It's still early. It could be one of those things where like people are comfortable playing Omni Red because it's what they played last format. And uh, that could be it. Green is seeing a lot more results, probably like the second most results usually. So yeah, it's up in the air. We'll see what happens there. And we can talk about the level five. One dude I really want to talk about is going to be Metal Tyranimon here. It might be worth playing. It's got 6,000 power, so it's kind of weak. But if you would destroy a level 6 Digimon, this this becomes active, so you can attack again. I don't think it's super necessary in this build, because once again, we are download. Uh, we, we need that extra power here and there. You could try it out. It might be worth playing over uh, Rapidmon in a, like, if you feel like power doesn't really matter as much. Or maybe you think you have enough power with Kabuterimon and Minomon. <sighs> because being able to make yourself active again, destroy even more Digimon, is really good, for sure. It's probably better in the new deck that's coming out, the Kabuteri one from the starter deck. Everything else here is kind of lame. I mean, sure, you can rest dudes with Lilymon, but that doesn't matter either. You have enough resting capabilities in this deck. Jewel Beamon has 10,000 power, so if you're interested in more power, that's an option for you as well. This one has piercing and jamming, but these things are all three costs to evolve. Sure, you have hidden potential, but eh, you want to make sure your deck is as consistent as possible. You're not always going to have hidden potential. And then... That's really it. There is Argomon level 6. That feels like an overkill kind of card, so I'm not playing it. But you could play it. It's got the same thing where if you're looking for more download Digimon. But once again, I think it's overkill. I think Sarismon and just having strong other Digimon is good enough. Uh, having these tech cards like Mega Gargo and uh, Dino Beamon is, will get the job done. You can play these because you have hidden potential. It also has piercing. And if it destroys a Digimon, it becomes active. So it's actually really, really good for your strategy. But once again, it doesn't do... It, it's more of a win more kind of card, right? And once again, you, you already play eight Megas. I don't, I don't see myself cutting any of the Megas right now. Maybe I can cut out a bunch of Stingmon if I feel like I can really control my opponent's board. But I mean, being able to beat Omnimon consistently, this is amazing for that reason. Uh, everything else is really irrelevant... Like, we already talked about Pupamon in the beginning of the video, but yeah, I don't want to play a bunch of memory just to get that effect off. Everything else is piercing, which is cool. Rosemond's pointless, things like that. All right, cool. So that's going to be it. Let's go ahead and talk about the starter deck green and how it changes the deck. I think the deck completely changes when starter deck green comes out. It becomes much more aggressive because you have access to Kabuterimon here, so you can get rid of your own Digivolution sources and... Uh, 
rest one of your opponent's Digimon. So this thing can rest two of your opponent's Digimon every time it's on the board, pretty much, because you should evolve into it all the way. So that's really good. It's probably better than Sarismon. It's got 12,000 power as well. You can always activate hidden potential. You definitely play four hidden potentials if that's going to be the case. Um, you might play Mimi to make sure you have some memory, but I don't think that's as necessary. As long as you can find hidden potentials, you should be fine. Uh, you probably cut out a lot of the other Megas as well. Or if you do cut out, if you don't cut out the Megas, you're probably forced to play Mimi or something just because uh, you want to make sure you have three memory on top of uh, Hidden Potential. That's my guess. I'd have to try it out a little bit more first. But uh, Tentamon is amazing. It's another win played effect, but it's essentially a win play draw one because it lets you put a Digimon, Green Digimon, from your trash to your, from your, from the top of your deck to your hand. Or if it's not a Green Digimon card, you put it in the bottom. So uh, I'm assuming. Uh, if the card is a green Digimon card. So I'm assuming this has to be a Digimon itself as opposed to any other green card. So most of your deck is green Digimon. You only have hidden potentials because you're probably going to take out um, Flower Cannon at that point just to make it as, as consistent as possible. Um, so you're probably going to take out Flower Cannon. Your only, your only other cards in this deck are going to be four hidden potentials. Maybe some other Tamers if you choose to play Tamers. I'm going to test it without Tamers first to see how far it goes. Um, you have more blockers this way. One cost to play blockers is gonna take you a long way. Rosemont sucks. <laughs> when did you have until the end of your opponent's next turn? One of your opponent's Digimon cannot attack or block. Uh, it's pretty boring, honestly. Cause it'd be different if you could rest one of your opponent's Digimon, but it doesn't. This is this is the one that does it. So this is gonna be the main card. And this card is, I mean like it's cool, but once again, I don't feel like you need to worry about gaining memory as much in this deck list. So you don't really care about the tamers. You just wanna be as consistent as possible by spamming your board of Digimon and having one of the best option cards in the game, being hidden potential discovered. Yeah. <laughs> so that's gonna be my green deck profile. I, I need you guys to know, I've tested this against red. I've tested this against yellow. Uh, some Shrine Greymon shenanigans. I've tested this against so many different decks, and this deck has come out on top most of the time. It's kind of ridiculous. So if you guys are looking for a powerful deck to try out, you can definitely try this. Uh, make changes as you see fit. Let me know what changes you would make if you would make any changes at all. Uh, let me know what decks you feel like you beat this deck against all the time. Like, oh, uh, my, uh, my, my, my Dukemon, my Dukemon control deck destroys this deck every single time i play against it so this deck sucks <laughs> let me know in the comments i appreciate all the comments i appreciate all the support you guys have been killing it when it comes to the digimon content and i appreciate you we're gonna continue the digimon content because i love this and i will see you guys next time peace